Welcome to the School of Travel's podcast. I'm your host, Becky Gillespie, and each week I bring you stories of how travel can truly change your life if you take the chance to get out on the road and step out of your comfort zone. My guests also share travel tips and lessons they've learned along the way, which I hope inspires you to let travel be your teacher. Welcome back for another lesson from the School of Travel's podcast. This week, I'm bringing you my interview with Alex Ferres, a French expat doing translation work in Tokyo. Alex started the travel game young, just barely a teenager, when he took a trip to Germany from his native country of France and met people from all over the world at a special event. He also has been a longtime practicer of judo, which led him to visit Tokyo for the very first time, and he fell in love with the country at first sight. I'm going to let him share the rest of the story with you. So here's Alex. Welcome to episode seven of the School of Travels podcast. And I am excited today to bring my friend from the co-working space here in Tokyo. His name is Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello. Thank nice you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks to you. I am excited pleasure. to hear your story. It, yeah, it's been a pleasure to meet you yeah. while I've been here this time in Tokyo. So can you tell us first a little bit about yourself? Okay, so, well, my name is Alex. I'm 29 years old, and I'm French, as you can probably hear. I can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've been living in Tokyo for five years now. Well, it, w- it will be five years in a few days. Oh, happy anniversary. Yeah, thank you. And, um, well, I'm from Marseille, in the south of France. It's a nice town nearby the sea. And, well... What else? And uh, oh yeah, I, I work as a translator here. Do you like? Are you a freelancer here, or? I'm a freelancer. Okay. How long uh, have you been freelancing? For about six months now. I just yeah, it's kind of new. Yeah, just a little bit <laughs> less than quit. me. I'm like ten months now. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So a bit like... scary, but <laughs> sometimes scary, but exciting. So I know we're going to talk about travel today. So that yeah. means that you can travel whenever you want. Essentially. Yeah, basically, uh, okay. yeah. Or whenever my wife is okay now. <laughs> oh, is she also a freelancer? Uh, no, she isn't a freelancer, so she she can take she she cannot take like just days off like that in Japan. <laughs> All right, well, Alex, well, as I told you, this is about mm, this is about yeah. like um, I want to hear about your travel yep. background and what really brought you here. So, okay, first of all, where when do you think that you first became interested in travel interested in travel i think uh i became interested in travel when i was a teenager uh well i used to go like camping and that kind of stuff with my parents when i was like younger okay just around but, marseille or other yeah of yeah i was in south of france like 200 kilometers from my hometown but at that time I wasn't like I just went because my parent went there <laughs> but when I was teenager I went uh, do you know the world youth days no what's that it's uh, like a huge Christian event like where young Christian people gather in a city mm-hmm. for about one week but they come from like worldwide Really? So it's about. Uh, so I, I joined that event in Germany for the first time when I was like fourteen, I think. Oh, and your parents were really supportive, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were okay. So it was a group. So it was a group trip with other teenagers. So I joined this like just because it sounded fun. <laughs> and where, did, my, where did you hear about this this organization when you were fourteen? Uh, from one of my best friends. He was actually joining, so we went together. And at that time, we could meet, like, just... It was kind of the first time for me to meet foreigners. I mean, like, you know, people from really far away. (laughs) You know, not Spanish people, not Italian people, or not German people, but, like, really, you know, like, I don't know, Japanese people, Korean people, American people. Other continents. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, just, yeah, not Europe. And so I met many friends during that event and we kept in touch and then I started being interested in really like other continents other countries and yeah I guess that's the the beginning I'm curious about what you did that week 
Because uh, I've never heard of it. I don't, I don't know if it still is going on. Or. Uh, yeah, it's like it happens every four years. And every time it's in a different city, they're about... Like, it depends on the city, but it's from one million to several million people gathering in the same place. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, like, really huge. <laughs> so what are, you, what are they all doing? Are all uh, well, it's a Christian event, so there are some activities related to that, uh, to religion. But, like, many kind of cultural exchanges. So we meet other groups. We... we like we also had some parties. <laughs> well, so. that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was not that you know that how to say. <laughs> Strictly. Well, yeah, yeah. No, it was not strict at all. So it was really you know having fun. <laughs> Were there like musical like? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I actually joined three times, like every four years. The first time was in Germany. The second time was in Spain. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh no, actually, it was actually two times, sorry. (laughs) The the third time was a different event. (laughs) You would have, I'm sure you would have gotten a lot more interested from 14 to 18. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So when you were between 14 and 18, you were were telling your parents, like, let's go, let's go on these vacations outside. Well, actually, we we kept going to that, you know, camping. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like my family. (laughs) But I tend to talk more to foreigners than French ah. people at that time, yeah. So I kind of opened my mind. <laughs> How interesting. It was also the first occasion to practice English at that time. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and I, I've told a lot of um, Japanese students in the past when I used to be an, an English teacher here, Mm-mm. you know, it's so important to learn English just for traveling, if nothing else. Mm. Uh, okay, so yeah. you went to these events. Uh, yeah. Did your family ever get on that international trip together and finally leave the campsite? No, and... actually we stayed in France with my family. Okay. Every time I have been traveling outside of France was either with my friends or alone. How, do, how does it feel to have such a different view of travel and like an open mind with going different places compared to your family? Because for me, there's been a range of emotions, uh, mm. mostly wishing they could come with me or... I, some things, I was okay, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. well, Actually, yeah. When, when I was younger, uh, I used to be really, how to say, like, actually, I didn't want to travel without my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was, like, before, um, yeah, when I, like, before 10, especially before 10, I had the opportunity, you know, to join that class trip or, uh, you know, with school. Uh, but I always refused <laughs> Because my mom could, couldn't come. But yeah, after that, I just... It was the opposite. Like, I just actually wanted to travel without them. So you talked about traveling alone. What, where was the first place you went? Or what was that alone. first experience? Alone. Yeah. Uh, alone, it was actually Japan. In Japan? Well, yeah. that's quite far from France. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, before that, I used to travel with my friends... Yeah, with friends or join join groups. I didn't know these people, but I was just in some groups. <laughs> but you felt comfortable. Yeah, so it was okay. okay. Yeah, right. yeah. I know some people that are very that that really scares them. The idea that they know no one when they go somewhere. Oh, okay. I find it exciting. I do too. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to try to if people feel really anxious, to, I want to try to help them see that it's okay, that it will be okay to do what you feel so comfortable doing. Yeah, it's actually. Mm. It's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you came to Japan for the yeah. first time, how old were you? I was seven years ago, so I was 22. Did you come here the first time and move here? No. Uh, I came here, like, it was about 10 days, not that long. I see, by yourself? By myself. Just yeah. to travel? Uh, to travel and practice judo. Uh, judo. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have been practicing judo for like 15 years. Wow. In, in France. So I just came, like, you know, it's the home country of judo, so. Right, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so I visited Tokyo, Kyoto, and Hiroshima. What was it like to go to those places by Hello. yourself? Yeah, being still it was, young. Uh, yeah, it was really like, uh, how to say, a lot of adrenaline i would say Mm -hmm. 
Like I was all by myself with just I didn't have internet so I, I couldn't contact anyone at the time. <laughs> <Did you laughs> so it was Japanese really no I couldn't all? speak Japanese. Uh, my English was not that good. So, uh, well, I had two contacts. It was like uh, there were uh, judo teachers, Japanese judo teachers in Hiroshima and in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. But yeah, except that, yeah, it was just, you know, the adventure. <laughs> Did you stay with the judo teachers when you came? Like stay with their family? Uh, like the one in Tokyo, I just met him for like one day. We just had a talk and some practice uh, but then I was staying in a, in a dormitory it, it was not a private room so I, I wanted to meet some people and make friends were you able to find that place on the internet and book it? yeah yeah I booked uh, no well actually I didn't book anything when I came uh, when I arrived at the airport mm-hmm. I just asked them to find me a room at the tourist information desk Oh, you okay. know the airport. You yeah, only so see those, but I've never used them to actually have me them book me a place. But uh, yeah, so like I was okay. Why not? So I just asked them, and they found that uh, used hostel in eastern part of Tokyo. And so I stayed there, made some friends, practiced judo. So they called from the airport and made the reservation. Yeah, they made it for me. And just told you how to get there and then... Yeah, yeah they just gave me the address, a small map, like, from the station, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Okay, I, I want listeners to hear this. Like, if you're afraid of going to a country no, by it's yourself, actually like, you can just ask the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there are so many you? people to help you. Like, even in the street, when I was... Well, I got lost many times. But every time there was someone to help me or, you know, just... Like, especially in Japan, even, even if they can't help you, they try. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're so polite about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really think that Japan is maybe the best place to take your first solo trip. I if think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's really safe to travel alone here. I felt really safe and I have, even, even as a woman, I mean, I have many friends who came here alone and they went all around Japan and... They just enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, the, my first travel solo experience was actually going to Kyoto from Tokyo. Oh, okay. The first thing that happened was like it was raining. I got out of the train station, and an old woman gave me her umbrella, and I knew that was the sign it was going to be all good. Actually, on my very first day on, in Japan, you know, I I had some you know this noodles ramen, so I was all alone with all my big luggages. It was my first very first meal in Japan, and there was just that guy. Uh, I don't know, some, like, you know, he was wearing a, a suit just after work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he started talking to me. I think he guessed that it was actually my first day with all the luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and so same, he gave me, like, many advices, you know, about that, that like, that district I was staying in. And he also paid the meal for me. <laughs> wow! Yeah, that's just so yeah, saying, yeah, please enjoy your trip. Welcome to Japan. <laughs> Oh, it was so, yeah, it was a good sign, like, really good start. Yeah. <laughs> and probably the first moment you're really even more connecting with Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wow, so yeah. 10 days here by yourself, and then you went back to, to Marseille. Yeah, and when I went back, I decided to go back to Japan. <laughs> oh, wow. How <laughs> yeah. much time did you give yourself? Like, I'll be back in six months. In one year. like One year from yeah, now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just enough time to save money and mm-hmm. come back. So you, and that's what you did. Uh, well, I wanted to leave uh, to come back within one year, but actually I needed a bit more to save money, yeah. so it it's took cool. almost two years. Well, cheapest place, cheapest <laughs> yeah, place, yeah, yeah. So. Especially like uh, the second time, I wanted to stay longer, one year, so I had to save a lot of money. So. If you don't mind me asking, if you remember what <laughs> amount of money was enough in your mind to, um, to come over? It was, and yeah, and it's actually something. easy to remember. It was 10,000 euros and it was just enough. It was not luxury, but, you know. <laughs> you could do it and you were... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, yeah, yeah, yeah. I came to it. Tokyo and I could survive about four months without any job with that. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. And on the fourth month, I found something to what finally you, be. What did you end up doing? The very first job was uh, bento delivery, you know, that, you know, food delivery for oh. 
<laughs> of course, I know a bento, but like yeah. for those uh, who don't know, yeah, yeah. a bento is like a, a like a lunch a lunch box. box. Yeah. yeah, lunch box. A lunch pack. For, and... So I was just driving a bike <laughs> all around Tokyo <laughs> and deliver, yeah, delivering these boxes. Yeah. It'd be a great way to get to know the city. Yeah, and to know people as well. Yeah, right. uh, actually, I made friends like with some of the clients regular customers I have to say whenever I was working in an office in Tokyo I always envied the bike messengers I thought you had so much more freedom than we did um, I was quite free <laughs> okay the illusion is real <laughs> uh, so when you came back when you moved here for that year yeah did you end up staying actually I met someone <laughs> oh really yep like and a girl, uh, she yeah a girl someone <laughs> who is now my wife oh I have to ask yeah. how did you meet I love these stories well that would sound fun for especially for english native speakers uh -huh. <laughs> i was working in an english conversation cafe some kind of school those yeah. are quite common here yeah in yeah japan. yeah so well in japan and only in japan it's okay for french people to teach english <laughs> i agree with that yes we will have um, people from around the world teaching yep. english yeah here. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah actually the, the yeah the main goal wasn't to exactly learn english but meet foreigners like in other cultures right it's, about, it's a lot a lot of times it's an exchange yeah right? yeah 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 it's not a lesson i i didn't have any book or something so and she was a customer there right it's, well, it's a great way to get to know people isn't it it's, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. and yeah actually all the people i met at that time and my situation now i i think everything is kind of connected you know it's like some such people introduced me to such like some company for example and i found my next job you know it's like... so I've, I've had the same experience here <laughs> yeah. in japan and i think that's a great tip for listeners is like mm. you know use the people like be open to meeting people because you yeah don't know what yeah you don't know what will happen I, do, I mean in the first place you don't expect that to happen you just talk to them mm. then you keep in touch and then well something nice happen like you find a new job, you find a wife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice yeah. Oh, that's a great story. It seems like Japan eventually was your thing. It was like the country yep. where you felt... Yeah, yeah. You know, For, yeah, it was the biggest trip, I would say. I'm still here. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. glad that I got to meet you here in Japan. Me too. Um, have you traveled since being based here? Have you? Do you take trips often from here? Um, yeah, I travel a lot in, in Japan, actually. Okay, yeah. 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 So, I'm into uh, cycling. So every time I have some free time, like a few days off, I mean, now I'm freelance, I can do it whenever I want, but uh, <laughs> when I was an employee, I used to take some days off to just take my bike, my backpack, and go in the west part of, western part of Japan. What is it like to cycle in Japan? Is it easy? They've got it. It set is up, or um, it's kind of annoying. Or? It is easy to uh, like. You know, there are so many convenience stores, so many accommodation like places. So it's easy to find somewhere to stay or to eat. But well, uh, with a bicycle, you, the, the 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 hardest part was that there are a lot of mountains. <laughs> Right, I yeah. Japan is 70% yeah, yeah, yeah. So physically it wasn't easy, but except that, yeah, it was like, you know, people always nice. I always could find food, <laughs> places to stay. Right. <laughs> so it was, well, let's say comfortable. <laughs> I know in Tokyo they've got any kind of bike accessory that you want to find. They, you can oh, yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're starting yeah, from yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Even in Tokyo or even on the internet, I mean, it's really easy to find a, you know, some second-hand bike. <laughs> I got mine for a hundred dollars. I mean, it's a road bike, a nice one. But that guy who sold it to me just didn't want it anymore. Like, he didn't have enough space to, to, to store it. Was so, he Japanese? Uh, he was Japanese, yeah. The reason I ask is because, and I don't, listeners, you may not know this, if you buy something secondhand in Japan, it will have been taken care of yeah. so well. Yeah, it was almost new. <laughs> yeah, the Japanese in general, I'm stereotyping yeah. here, but they take care of their things so well. So, and I do that every year, actually. Like, uh, during the spring, that's the best season 
to travel by bike. Mm -hmm. Not much rain and not too hot. Yeah, the summer yeah. here's been really hot. I've yeah. been cycling but recently. <laughs> I, I've got also some, like, not troubles, but, like, uh, how to say, unexpected things during my trips. Ooh. So, especially, uh, it was like two years ago, uh, I went to from Tokyo to Kyoto by train with my bike. Mm -hmm. And I planned to come back to Tokyo by bike. Wow. So, the, the thing is that, uh, at that time, so I was still in the Japanese language school, so as a student, mm -hmm. and I didn't have much money. Okay. And like I broke my bike on the way. On the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I went from like Kyoto uh, on the second yeah the second day from Kyoto. I broke my bike and I couldn't fix it. I didn't have enough money to fix it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No. But the thing is that, like, I had, um, so I, I had my bag, all my package and stuff. And I, so I didn't, I had the choice to either take the train back to Tokyo, but leave my bike there, or hitchhike. <laughs> hitchhike? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it wasn't, and that's what my wife told me, like, it's dangerous, don't do it. <laughs> but I didn't want to, to, to just to leave my bike and, you know, it was, you know, it was my, my bike. <laughs> right, it was, yeah, it was my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually gave, uh, yeah, gave a try to hitchhike. Uh, I won't, yeah. It's like first time. The first time, very first time in Japan. So in, in, in your life as well, or the first time in Japan? Yeah, uh, well, I did it once in my hometown, but it was just to go to high school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> <it's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And what happened? And actually, five cars took me all the way long from Nara. Mm -hmm. You know, Nara is uh, about like 60 kilometers from Kyoto. Mm -hmm. So from Nara to Tokyo. Wow. Yeah, it took one day. Yeah, <laughs> instead of one week. The, I, I mean, I planned to go from Kyoto to Tokyo in one week by bike. Mm -hmm. Well, the trip was a bit shorter. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I could make it. Oh, so, goodness. yeah, five cars. So five, yeah, five different people took me all the way long. Any uh, scary people? Of those five? Just normal people. Normal people? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, was it yeah. Dangerous? Actually, lots of couples. So, yeah. The first step was like from Nara to uh, Nagoya. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah. Small steps between Nagoya and Tokyo. So, I have to say, I haven't done this before, especially like getting a, multiple drivers. Would they just drop you off in like a convenience store parking lot and then you'd wait? They, uh, it was actually on the, you know, the, uh, the service areas. Oh, like okay, in, uh, like the rest stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the place where you are, like, where you have the most chance to find someone to take you <laughs> so far. I mean, like in convenience stores, they, they're usually people just living around, so they, they won't take you far. <laughs> That's right. If you wait nearby highway, uh, yeah. It's like, so they would drop you off and immediately you're looking for the next person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did you, I guess if it was just one day, you didn't need to sleep in a hotel or stay anywhere? No, um, but... Well, I took the last train, actually, like, to go back. When they left, they didn't leave me, like, just in front of my home. So they, uh, you know Odawara? Yes. Yeah. So it's about 80 kilometers from Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Two um, two. Yeah, yeah. So the last car just uh, dropped me in front of that station. And I took the last train okay. to my home. It was about midnight. But, well. <laughs> so it's like... What like eight or eight to ten dollars? I would say to get from Odawara to yeah, uh, yeah, up towards yeah, the center. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually it was actually a really cheap way to travel. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Because uh, I, I will tell you, listeners, like a, a bullet train ticket from Tokyo to Kyoto is about um, in U.S. dollars about twelve or one hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, uh, one way. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this time was yeah about ten dollars. I would say. Plus two dollars for some food I got in the convenience store. <laughs> I'm glad you had that much left on you at least. You said you didn't have mm. much money, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but 
Well, so would so, you recommend hitchhiking in Japan? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it need Well, uh, it, it would be better to prepare a bit. Okay. Uh, I mean, I was like, you know, I didn't have any choice, so I did it. But if I had to do it again, mm -hmm. I would prepare a bit more. And, well, yeah, but I accept that. Awesome. Yeah. I, I <laughs> kind of want to challenge myself to do this in Japan. Oh, let's go. I've got some friends who did it. Like, uh, they actually did a race uh, from Tokyo to Kyoto. Hitchhiking by hitchhiking. A hitchhiking there were race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there were two groups, <laughs> like of two people. Yeah. And those who arrived first uh, would get a free meal from the others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's so cool. laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I wonder how they knew and could trust that they were always getting a ride. You know. Hmm? If I wonder how the the other team knew that that the first team. Always was hitchhiking. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to train. Like, you know, do that. Oh. I'm going to take a little shortcut. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I didn't ask. <laughs> but. Oh, <laughs> but, wow, that's so cool. I could just challenge my friends to do this and we'll, both, mm. we'll all be hitchhiking. Yeah. And actually, there are some websites as well that gives, like, uh, I think there is a, there is a wiki uh, oh. that gives tips to hitchhike in Japan. Oh, yeah. okay. So. Check it out. You should check yeah. that out, listeners, so you can find it. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to ask you a difficult question. What would you say travel has taught you in your life? Well, many things. The first that comes would be that, okay, I shouldn't judge people before knowing them. It's so easy to do that, isn't it? Yeah. I, I used to do it a bit before when I was in France. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, now I, know, yeah, I noticed that yeah, it's not a good thing. I mean... I feel like it's easy to make mistakes. <laughs> yeah, as the world gets more crowded, I feel too, it's easier mm. to get a little annoyed with like, you mm. want your own space, you see these people, oh, he's probably like this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But when you get to talk to them, then you notice he's just a guy like you or yeah. even not like you, but just, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, or he's got some interesting stories or some yeah. things to say. Yeah, and I guess, um, uh, second thing, well, to not be scared. To get lost. I thought you were going to say to hitchhike, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, to no, to get lost. Uh, I mean, lost. Uh, I like, when I talk to my friends who stayed in France, they, uh, like, especially before leaving for the first time to uh, to Japan, uh, one of my friends, you know, like, he's the guy who never traveled and he's even not interested in traveling. Uh, and he told me, so, Alex, just tell me, like... You will take the plane, you will arrive in Japan, you will be in that airport where you can't read anything. What will you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will just ask someone maybe <laughs> if I don't find my way or something. But yeah, like I understand that he was like, you know, like doubt doubtful. Okay. Yeah, but it's actually like it can it can be scary to to especially when we're alone. It can be scary, but it's actually okay to get lost. You always find a way back. You always find someone to help you. <laughs> and that makes for the best story as well. Yeah, yeah. And actually, when you're alone, especially yeah, especially that time, uh, you can dare to talk to people. Yeah, like, you have when, to. when I was traveling with my friends, you know, you are like, okay, just like, let, let's find a way by ourselves. Like, uh, you know, one of or the other will just check on the internet or something. But when you're alone, you know, just have no choice but ask people. <laughs> Especially if you're lost, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. helpless. And... Yeah, so... And it's... Yeah, I think I... Yeah, like, I, I, I made many friends like that, and I have really good memories. Okay, I think this is the other difficult question to ask you. Yep. Um, you know, maybe this has to do more with when you're traveling around Japan... But what are the three kind of unique items that you feel that you always have to pack on these trips? Not my pants. <laughs> Please pack them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, maybe bright colored, really cool pants. Well, I, when I go on bicycle trips, I always take my 
Um, is it is know. it a light that you crank? Yeah. Like to turn on. Yeah, yeah. And, I don't know how to say that in English, but I want to say crank light, but I I haven't taken cycling trips really, so. Yeah. Well, I don't need any battery for this light. I just. Oh, it's like hand powered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hand powered light. Okay. Well, that's one of the items. I yeah. usually take with me, that could be well, ju- just in case. <laughs> yeah, but I'm kind of minimalist when I travel. Like that's important too. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're doing something active like cycling. Yeah, don't over. The like there are actually only three things that I always always check before going anywhere. Mm-hmm. That's my wallet, my underwear, and my passport. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I think pants. if you have your wallet, so you have your money, mm-hmm. so you can buy food or, you know, just, uh, well, you can buy food and that's important. Well, pants, <laughs> 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 you, you can smell good. <laughs> yeah, you can, you know, stay healthy, yeah. uh, let's say. <laughs> and the passport, just in case of, uh, like, control or something. Right, yeah. ID. Even if I don't go abroad, I just, I usually keep it. Uh, but, and that light. <laughs> right, and, and it's kind of like the bare essentials. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, mm, well, maybe I'm too used to the comfortable life in Japan. I mean, you can't mm-hmm. find anything anywhere. Well, that's yeah. That, 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 that's the only item I usually take. It's, it's unique for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what advice would you give to someone like your friend who was not sure what to do if he couldn't read the signs? If someone's mm. thinking about traveling but they're scared to do it, what advice would you give them? Um, well, I think the scariest part is to go alone mm-hmm. rather than travel, like the travel itself. Oh, okay. So uh, being alone is scarier yeah. than traveling. Yeah, I mean, around me, that's what I heard, like, from some friends who were scared about traveling. <laughs> uh, like, won't you get lonely? That kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So, for those people, I would say just give a try to use hostel dor- dormitories. Uh, I mean, if you don't want to be alone, just go to places where there are other people like you. And you will notice, like, really quickly that you're not alone <laughs> and that you can make it <laughs> and if you don't know you can ask so. yeah and anyway like if you don't enjoy it you can just go back and try something else yeah give it a try at least once <laughs> come to japan first if yeah you well japan is a good start <laughs> Okay, well, um, where would you like to travel next? I know you've, you've traveled a lot in Japan. It could be a place in Japan. What's, what's uh, next so on your bucket till list? Till now, I have, well, I have been traveling in Japan. I went to Thailand as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. They have uh, better beaches than we do, I think. Okinawa, okay, they have beautiful beaches, but... Yep, I can confirm. I was <laughs> surfing yesterday, and <laughs> I can confirm. <laughs> you went surfing but, yesterday? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, well, the... Hmm. <laughs> the beaches are. <laughs> Wait, were you in Okinawa yesterday, or? No, I was nearby Tokyo, oh. in Enoshima. See, if you come here for your first travel country, guys, you can go surfing just outside. Yeah, Tokyo. it's one hour from Tokyo. It's not that expensive. Beautiful. And well, yeah. it was nice. Okay, so you were surfing, but where would you like to go next? So next, uh, I'm thinking about Eastern Europe. Yeah, and Northern Europe as well, like, you know, Estonia. Estonia? Yeah, huh. Estonia, uh, Latvia, and then, yeah, just rent a car and go on a road trip around there. Uh-huh. Why, why this part of the world? Uh, well, it's also related to my job <laughs> oh. as a freelancer. Okay. Uh, you know that Estonia has a e-residency uh, you know, have you heard about the e residency in Estonia? I have, but could you explain it just a little bit for people? Okay, who don't know? so you can be e resident, so digital resident of really? the Republic of Estonia. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you just have to apply on the internet, and then it gives you the access to uh, banking, online banking. You can set up a company there, yeah, and you can make business in Europe. So as a French guy, uh, well, I mean, 
I don't really need it, need to do it to to set up a business in Europe. Well, it gives me an excuse to travel there. You can get an EU. <laughs> yeah, I could to, set up company Euro in France, account, yeah. like uh, for I, I want to do that to deal with my uh, European customers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, yeah, the thing that I can do everything online is really convenient. Where like wherever I am, so that's a good thing. And yeah, I just well, that's. As I told you, an excuse to, to just discover new things. <laughs> yeah, and to try out that system, I'm sure it would be you'll learn a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, you could become an, an e-residency ambassador for other people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. why not? <laughs> well, look yeah. forward to the photos. <laughs> yep. So, thank you Bullshit. so much for joining us today. And if people want to follow you on Instagram or follow your adventures, is there some place they should? Yeah, so I have... Actually, two Instagram accounts, one for myself and one for my dog. Your dog? <laughs> yeah. So I have a, sh- you know, I have a Shiba Inu, Shiba dog. Oh. Uh, so that's like uh, Japanese, Japanese breed. Um, so he's like, I'm actually planning to take him uh, on my trips in ja- uh, with, with me, like on my trips in Japan. Oh. So that's why I made an account to just to share pictures. <laughs> oh, okay. So the first my so my own account is two steps from Japan. Oh, okay. So just no spaces, just two steps from Japan. Is that a number or the word? Uh, so, I think that's the word. Okay, so yeah. T W O. Yeah, yeah. Two yeah. steps in Japan. Yeah. And the other is wasabi no tabi. Wasabi no tabi. It means, uh, well. Uh, it means the wasabi's journey. Jo- journey. Ah, okay. Yeah. So by the so way, like, kind of... tabi is T-A-B-I. For yeah. Who, uh, wasabi, like the spice. Right. N-O-T-A-B-I. No space. So is wasabi the name of your dog? Yep. Um, mm. He is he. very cute, by the way. You should definitely check out the Instagram account, everybody. I've been enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks to you. This week's travel quote is from Nelson Mandela, and he says, There is no passion to be found playing small in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. And here with Alex, we see that since having moved to Japan, he's now able to be a freelancer. Most importantly, he found the love of his life, and he is learning how to surf, learning how to take more risks and getting on the road hitchhiking. It's it's really wonderful to see how travel opened up Alex's world, and it can open ours as well. There's this path that we can't see until we start taking it, and travel will just bring you all of these experiences if you're willing to be open and just start your own journey. So whatever you're thinking of doing, listeners, I encourage you, start working towards it. Write it down on paper, make a plan. I've also posted both of Alex's Instagram accounts, on our website, theschooloftravels.com. He mentioned that his Instagram account was called Two Steps from Japan, but it's actually his last name, F-A-R-E-S-S, Fares, Fares, Two Steps from Japan. So you'll see that on the website, and I hope you enjoy all the photos of his dog in Wasabi no Tabi. The dog is absolutely adorable. (laughs) All right, well, I hope you have a wonderful week, listeners, and I will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the School of Travels podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love for you to subscribe and leave us a rating wherever you get your podcasts. Special thanks to The Sam Chase for allowing us to use their song, In a Perfect World. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode, and remember to always let travel be your teacher. If you keep your options open, there are places you will go. They will treat you like the kings and queens your parents thought you'd be when you were born. With your head up standing tall And you'd look back and think it's funny How you spent your time and money In this world Living in this